Good afternoon. My name is Laura Pearson. I'm with the uh, St. Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce. I'm the Workforce Development Coordinator, uh, and I'm with the Ogdensburg Chamber. Welcome to the May 2022 edition of the St. Lawrence County Chamber's Lunch and Learn. Um, this monthly educational webinar series is made possible by the generous support of the St. Lawrence University and Clarkson University, who are leadership circle supporters of the chamber and make these webinars possible. First, I wanna run through a few items. Your mics have been muted and your webcam cams have been disabled. But if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to type them into the chat window and we will do our best to answer them. Please note that this session is being recorded for the purposes of broadcasting it on our webinar archive and our YouTube channel, which is named the SLC Chamber NY. After the presentations are complete, we will stop the recording for any Q&A. If you are interested in presenting a webinar for us, uh, please let us know. We have, always have lots of spaces and we can uh, fit you in anywhere. And if you have a special topic that you would like us to handle, please let us know that as well. Um, with that, I would like to turn things over to Steve Ryan, who is the Shared Work Initiative Program Coordinator from the Department of Labor. Steve will be presenting on a DOL Shared Work Initiative and other business resources that are available to for your business. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to present um, today to you all. Um, we, are, we have been doing a lot of presentations um, and trying to get the word out about shared work. Lori will follow me and talk about uh, our business uh, services. So um, in talking about shared work, I'm gonna you know, tell you a story of really where the department has been at over the last uh, two and a half years. Um, when COVID hit, um, I, I was overseeing all the career centers in the business engagement um, unit, and uh, it, we had to move over 1,100 people off of our workforce services and onto UI. Um, in my capacity, I was uh, transferred over to uh, help out with shared work, and uh, we're going to be talking a lot of what the department has done to make this, uh, this program um, a, a lifeline to businesses. It was it was amazing during COVID um, how many businesses took advantage of the shared work program. As you can see, uh, we are over 3,500 businesses that use this um, during COVID. Um, prior to COVID, in a given year, it was uh, approximately 350 businesses that um, would sign up for the shared work program. Okay, shared work initiative. It um, it really yeah, go to the next one. Can you? Hit? Okay. So it was traditionally used by manufacturing, and it was um, on average manufacturing during a, a lull time would take advantage of it for seven to eight weeks, um, usually during the winter months. Uh, during COVID, our n number one um, business that took advantage of it was uh, a hospital. Um, obviously, I can't name names due to confidentiality, but uh, healthcare uh, was impacted greatly. And, you know, when we start thinking about that, you, you think about healthcare and, uh, you know, with COVID, well, when all the elective surgeries were put on hold, um, you know, hospitals took advantage of shared work to keep them attached to the hospital. So we just um, highlighted some of the different uh, industries that took advantage of it. Um, and, uh, you know, it was uh, very successful during this period, um, and we got the word out. Our next slide is just a couple testimonials uh, from businesses. Um, we work hand-in-hand -hand with businesses um, to help them through the shared work process, um, and it, it, we act as account executives. We work very closely with the UI division since shared work is under the UI umbrella. But as you can see, we have formulated great relationships with businesses that have taken advantage of this program. And it has been beneficial not only to the business, but also to the employees. Okay, so what is shared work? Shared work is a UI program. Um, it is best used to avoid layoffs it retains valued employees, and it saves on labor costs. Labor costs in, in most industries is the number one cost to businesses. So shared work 
instead of looking at a layoff or a partial layoff, people are able to uh, work a percentage of time and then collect unemployment for the other percentage of time they're not working. So we'll get into this, but um, it's really, it saves on labor costs and, and that was critical during COVID. Shared work also can be used in different types of ways too, uh, especially with seasonal businesses. Uh, bringing, bringing employees back earlier. Um, we, start thinking, we start thinking about this uh, in February and March. Uh, businesses, you know, depending on where you are in the state, St. Lawrence, uh, you, you know, you probably were opening up around April 1st. So instead of bringing your employees back on a, you know, for the season on April 1st, you might be able to bring a, a few employees back earlier to get that business up and ready to go April 1st. A lot of times businesses take five to 10 days to get ready to open up. So we want to start thinking about this a little differently, um, you know, using it for those seasonal businesses on the front end and the back end. And what it also does on the seasonal end, it, you get a commitment from your employees earlier. So they're not being poached by other businesses. So what happens um, in the government world, um, when we have a recession, when we have a pandemic, uh, USDOL always puts out a solicitation um, grant for shared work. Uh, and what that does is it, we, we, it is a promotional grant to get the word out of what shared work is, how it runs, um, and really letting businesses know about this. Very interesting uh, during COVID. Um, the governors talked almost daily, and um, Governor Lamont from Connecticut was mentioning what a great program this was to Governor Cuomo at the time. And next thing you know, we were uh, interacting with uh, the, the state of Connecticut um, on how they do things and what we're doing. Um, but when it all came down to it, uh, New York, uh, obviously, I'm a little being biased, but does it better than anybody. And they learned more from us than we learned from them because of how we were doing things. So, you know, some of the things that we're doing to promote shared work, we used on and Bradstreet as a lead generation tool. Um, and that provides us with emails. We have been strategically e-blasting businesses throughout the state. Um, depending on industry, depending on size, uh, you know, we've been hitting, um, obviously, the Chamber of Commerce and associations. We follow up with phone calls. We recently promoted at the New York Press Trade Show. Um, we are going to be promoting uh, on social media. And obviously, we conduct uh, customized presentations whenever possible. And we want to get the word out to as many businesses as possible um, in case they could use this as a tool in their toolkit. Okay, how does this work? Um, on average, you know, it costs business six to nine months salary when replacing an employee, we understand that. Um, and, and that could, depending on that type of position, the more technical, it's even more. Um, shared work keeps individuals attached to their businesses, um, and that is critical. During COVID, what we learned is that uh, many businesses were taking advantage of this. Um, the, the, the employers really went above and beyond to help their workforce, and that was something that was just um, critical to making sure that this program was successful when we increased tenfold. So it's, um, it's been a, a lifeline to businesses, but we've also, it's been a lifeline to the employees too. Because one of the nice parts about shared work is that if an employee is participating in a shared work plan, that their fringe benefits remain 100% whole. And then they, um, they're 
reduce 20 to 60 percent, depending on uh, operational needs and how an employer um, prepares the plan. Okay. So, you know, as I've mentioned, um, it's reduced by 20 to 60 percent. Uh, you can customize plans. If there's one thing that I, when I talk to uh, employers, is that this is very, very flexible. You can change your plan from week to week, depending on operational needs. You can go across your different operational units and decide where somebody would be reduced by what percentage, and you must have two people in that unit. You can recall furloughed employees. Instead of doing, uh, doing partial UI, bring them back, put them on a shared work plan. It's better for all. Um, and, you know, it really does help a business when they do gear back up. They can just not, not uh, apply for that given week or going forward. Plans are based on 53 weeks. Why 53? I can't get an answer to that, but that is what it is. So here's an example. Um, a, a business is uh, operational and needs to reduce by 20%. So what happens with shared work, which is a little different than unemployment insurance, it's based off of a 40 hour work week. Whereas unemployment is based off of a 30 hour work week. There is a difference there. Um, and it, with shared work, there is no job search requirement of those employees. Whereas if an employee is on partial unemployment, there is a job search requirement. So I just wanna you know, show the differences there. So what happens is uh, uh, an individual is, is cut by 20%. They work Monday through Thursday. This is just a scenario. And then they would collect unemployment for Friday. So it's a win-win for the business, uh, but it's also a win-win um, for the employee. Oh, the demand. Uh, when we first started working on this, everything was done by paper. And uh, I mean, there were days we received 2,200, 2,300 paper certifications of those individuals that um, were on shared work, but were sent, the business was sending them in so they could get paid for those days. Our system couldn't handle it. As you all have seen in the news, um, it, you know, unemployment was a major issue throughout the country. These legacy systems could not handle the volume. Well, we had the same situation in, in shared work. So uh, we made some drastic changes and we're gonna be discussing them shortly. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things we'd like to talk about, gear down, gear up. Um, employees do work a reduced schedule. Uh, it gives you that flexibility to call back for load employees, you know, on a part-time basis. Um, but it also helps a business gear up when operations are necessary. So they would gear up towards full-time uh, employment. Okay, so some of the eligibility requirements. Um, a business must employ two full-time employees employees working in New York State uh, must be part uh, of the UI um, contributions, uh, paying for consecutive calendar quarters, or in lieu of contributions, um, they reimburse the benefits paid. So most people are part of uh, the UI system. Now, on the, on the eligibility for the employees, it is no different than unemployment. They, they must be eligible for unemployment. 
Um, and that goes, you know, every situation is different. So I don't want to really get into that. But if a person is eligible for unemployment, they can be part of the shared work team. As I mentioned, there is no work search requirement. Um, and I thought this was a very uh, critical point. Um, full-time, part-time, seasonal, intermittent, or temporary employees. So we work hand-in-hand hand with our UI division um, to provide technical assistance to businesses uh, to, to make sure that shared work can be successful for everyone. And that's what I talk about. We, we have account executives, and they are unbelievable. I will tell you in a, a, a scenario I had. Uh, it was Friday night. It was about quarter to six. And uh, I had probably the largest union hotel in New York City call me. Uh, they wanted to be part of the shared work plan on Monday. Well, prior to COVID, it would say that it would take uh, two to three weeks before a plan would be approved. Um, but we needed to change that because it was critical that we worked hand in hand with the business. I was able to work with uh, somebody from the UI division. That person worked with that hotel till eight o'clock that night, and they were on the plan that Monday. You don't hear those stories in the news um, when you hear labor and unemployment, but the dedication and the passion of everybody involved in this program is, it goes, it goes above and beyond. So like I have talked about, we approve plans now in 24 to 48 hours. We have account executives. We make sure that they stay in touch with the businesses. They work with them if they have any problems, both on the business side and on the employee side. Uh, we work with them if they do want to make changes. Um, but, you know, some of the changes we've made uh, have been great. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, it reduces work hours and corresponding wages. Um, it's based on a 40-hour work week. Fringe benefits must be, remain whole. Uh, plans are in place 53 weeks. And uh, when that is coming to an end, the account execs reach out and work with the businesses to see if they need to um, extend that plan or, you know, apply for a new plan and so forth. Um, you cannot hire additional employees in any affected units. And what do I mean by that? If you have somebody that's reduced, say, a uh, unit's reduced by 40%, you can't hire somebody and say, you're going to come back and be on shared work. Otherwise, you could have brought those other individuals back full time. So that's just one of the criteria. doesn't happen often. But it, if it is part of a business that is not, the unit is not using shared work, they can hire. You know, just different uh, technical aspects of the program. Um, it, what happens is that once the plans are, are approved, um, you know, the, the, they work with the employer. Um, at the end of that week, the employee goes in, they certify just like they would on um, unemployment. It's a, it's a little different uh, way they do it, um, but the shared work has its own um, little portal that people go into. Um, we provide all sorts of technical assistance when it comes to the employer with their ny.gov account, um, if they have any questions on the UI end of it, if they miss weeks, uh, they weren't paid for a given week, we'll work with them to make sure um, that they are reimbursed for that. No plans can be retroactive, um, but it, there is a lot of technical assistance that is performed. As I mentioned, um, some of the improvements. Plans are now approved within 24 to 48 hours. <coughs> Everything is now electronic. Now, it only says 93%. I mean, when we first started, it was all paper. Um, though the other 7% is those that have back weeks that need to be paid. 
and that must come in on paper, unfortunately. Everything from the employer side is done electronically. Uh, the technical support and customer service is, is second, second to none. Um, people go above and beyond to help. We are out there promoting this program. Our commissioner um, just thinks the world of this. Um, so that's something that um, we have worked very hard on. Now, during COVID, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we had governors talking about this program. So um, there, obviously, there was a lot of um, support from uh, the business community. And um, uh, there's some legislative changes that happened. Um, shared work used to be a maximum of 26 weeks. That has now changed. It is now 20, 26 times an individual's weekly benefit rate. It's, and that means a lot because um, 26 weeks is basically what you get on unemployment uh, with no extensions. So um, obviously, if you were just reduced by 50%, there was no way you were going to reach your benefit rate. Um, so now shared work, can it, it will impact individuals differently, but it can be, go beyond the 26 weeks. So that's a, that's a huge change. And, and it's, it's very beneficial. Um, here are some websites and fact sheets. Um, we will be sending out this presentation um, and I will be, um, I just wanted to give a high overview of this program. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to Lori Thompson. who will talk about some other services um, and then we'll have questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Lori Thompson. I am the deputy director for our business engagement unit. We work very closely with the shared work team. Um, as they mentioned, when they do their outreach um, to promote the, the program and the opportunities, if they do talk to businesses that actually have more workforce development needs, they pass those businesses on to us for outreach and engagement from there. So I'll start by giving just a quick kind of overview of business engagement and highlight some of the services that we offer um, as a unit. So just quickly, our, you know, we're part of the system that connects over 250,000 individuals to career and training opportunities every year. Our mission is pretty simple. It's to create and connect talent pipelines to the opportunities of our business customers. We do that by assisting businesses that are growing and thriving through our business services teams, as well as assisting businesses that are downsizing and facing closures with layoff aversion, such as shared work, um, and through our rapid response services. We hold, prior to the pandemic, we, we held an average of 1,500 customized recruitments and job fairs um, annually to connect job seekers to businesses. Um, during the pandemic, we launched a virtual career fair platform, and that's what we've been mainly focusing on for the last several months um, to a year. Um, starting to get back out there and do some more in-person events, but we were able to um, you know, introduce a new tool so that we could continue those connections as, as we went through this time. Uh, we also maintain the tools and resources um, to provide no-cost cost services to our customers. So I'm just going to talk about some of the recruitment services, hiring incentives, um, HR consultations services and then make sure that everybody knows that we have dedicated leads in every region um, that can assist um, as well. So first is um, our New York State Job Bank. This is really our kind of premier source for job posting, um, job seeker resumes, and um, the number on the screen actually is a bit outdated. We're seeing over 460,000 jobs right now on the New York State Job Bank. There are lots of jobs, lots of opportunities out there. Um, so we connect job seekers to businesses through, this, through the New York State Job Bank. The site allows businesses to create accounts, um, self-service accounts, manage job orders, um, you know, edit them, take them down. They also have access to a robust resume database by having access to our New York State Job Bank. So it really allows um, you know, an in, a, a bil, ability to become visible um, to the public. And on the next slide, uh, talk a little bit more about that. Um, so 
posting posting with us, there's no cost um, to any of the services that the Department of Labor offers. So really, and this number is probably um, very conservative, up to $8,000 a year in savings um, by posting on the New York State Job Bank as opposed to other sites. Um, also gets lots of exposure. So not only saving money and time, but um, exposure to over 40,000 job seekers that visit the site on a monthly basis. Um, so really allows businesses to develop a large pool of qualified candidates um, to fill those positions. So the other is recruitment events. Um, like I said, before the pandemic, we were doing um, tons of events, um, 1,500 events on average every year. Um, our attending our events can save businesses up to $13,000 per year. Um, we have large regional events. We actually just had one in the capital region first since the pandemic. Um, back in person, our Dr. King Career Fair, um, and we're, we're participating in, in regional events um, now as well in person. Uh, we're, we're looking at our mini job fairs. We were doing those in our career centers prior to the pandemic. And as they open and begin, you know, begin to see customers again, we'll be rolling those back out. Dedicated recruitment events. So if a business has a large need, um, we have the ability to do a dedicated event um, specifically for that business. And like I said, new is our virtual career fairs. Um, we hold monthly events in every region throughout the state. So really these events, they bring a large group of people together in one place at one time. So it reduces the recruiting time. Also for our virtual career fairs, um, any job seeker that visits a business's booth, they have their resume right there. So after the event, they can download all of the, the information for the individuals that attended. A lot of times too, with the, with the chatting and the virtual events, businesses are either doing kind of initial interviews through our video chat feature, or they're setting up interviews. So really kind of, um, you know, spurring that, that recruitment time timeline. So the next is the marketing. We do a ton of marketing. Go ahead. Um, not sure why the other um, graphic here isn't showing up. This was just uh, a picture of some of the social media posts that we do. Um, we've been focusing, like I said, a lot on our virtual career fairs. So we, this is just kind of a, an example of uh, some of the marketing that we've done. Let me go to the next one. We, we present flyers for every event. So businesses have exposure to the public prior to the event. So it lets job seekers know who's going to be there, um, what the opportunities are at the event. We do a lot of target, targeted marketing so that we know that if um, a particular business is going to be here with a large need, we'll make sure that we're targeting those job seekers that meet the criteria that the businesses are looking for. As we get closer to event, we are at, to the event, we highlight some of the top businesses that have the most openings. Um, so again, lots of exposure um, about opportunities. On the next slide, this just talks a little bit about our BLAST email. And we have the, the capability through our two-way communication mechanism to one-on-one -on -one, um, reach individuals. We have a very large pool of individuals that we can market to. So in, tw in 2021, we sent over uh, 450 emails, um, almost 500 actually. Um, and really, you know, we do that strategically. Um, we help businesses market. So we take an opportunity and we make sure that we're highlighting benefits, flexibility, wages. Um, we, you know, we make sure that there's an actionable subject line. We're concise and quick. You know, how, how easy is it to apply to this position and, and get my name in the running? Um, we provide detailed um, job descriptions and make sure that they have access to job applications and, and links. Um, and we do that strategically. We can hone in on a county um, or another, you know, another geographic location down to a zip code even. Um, we can look at, you know, the last time that we saw the customer, what their experiences are, what their desired field is, other things like as, um, such as rather, um, they need to have a driver's license, or we only want to talk to bilingual candidates, um, or we need, you know, a bachelor's degree at minimum. So we only put the candidates that meet those kind of minimum criteria in front of our business customers. We can go to the next slide. So this is just a quick snapshot of hiring incentives and funding opportunities. Um, another thing that we do is we, we work to connect our business customers to these, to these opportunities, um, whether it be a tax credit or whether it be a, a funding opportunity. This is just some of them, the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, or WOTC. Um, we have our New York Youth Jobs Program, um, which is a tax credit for hiring youth between the ages of 16 and 24. Hire a vet credit, um, work for success, federal bonding, Excelsior Jobs Program. I won't go into all of them because I have a short amount of time, but if anyone is interested in learning more about any of them, um, 
you can certainly reach out and we can get you connected with additional information. So the last um, service I wanted to highlight was our human resources consultation services. And this is a really great service for um, small to medium sized businesses that may not have a, a robust HR department or a legal team. Um, we help businesses with a variety of um, HR at no cost. Um, you know, job analysis, skills gap analysis that can come into play with on the job training programs and developing training plans, um, skills matching and referral technology. Um, we can, you know, help with employee handbooks, looking at, you know, developing, updating. Um, we can be a conduit to other areas for legal compliance. Um, we can take a look at employment applications and um, provide guidance there, interview techniques, um, best interview questions employee orientation and um, turnover analysis. So again, a lot more information that we can include here if, if anyone's interested. And last, we have dedicated leads in all of the regions throughout the state. And on the next slide, this is just kind of a statewide um, list. In our North Country, our Associate Business Services Representative is Melissa Boretsky. She's located in Plattsburgh. Um, so her phone number and her email address are on the screen there. Um, Thank you. Um, so she can be reached out to directly also on our website. Um, uh, they, you know, all of our, our leads are there as well. Or you can contact me directly if you have any questions or if you want to get connect, connected to somebody, have a particular need and you're not sure where to go, um, you can reach out to me as well and I can um, get you connected with the correct person. So again, just a very quick snapshot, but if anyone is interested, you know, you can reach out and we can um, certainly provide additional information. And that's my information on the screen there. Awesome, thank you so much, Lori. And we'd like to thank Steve for all his, uh, his presentation as well. There's a lot of information on these slides and we'll be sending out the slides um, after the workshop. And when we get our webinar link up on our YouTube channel, we'll send it all out together. I would like to thank all of you for joining us today. I hope our hour has been valuable to you and provided useful information. Follow and like our Facebook page to stay up to date with what's happening at the chamber and to register for our next webinar. The topic of that webinar will be released soon. We encourage you to view other webinars in our Lunch and Learn series by going to St. Lawrence SLC chamber.org and clicking on archived webinars in the right hand menu or go to our YouTube channel to search for SLC Chamber NY. We will stop the recording right now and open it up for Q&A, and we would like to thank you all again for joining us.